happen. The Gillard government has moved to take some of the sting out of the backlash from farmers in the Murray-Darling Basin over the latest proposals for water reform by appointing a parliamentary committee to focus on the human impact of the final plan. The Murray-Darling Basin Authority has released a preliminary proposal recommending reductions in water allocations of between 27 and 37 per cent. The politics of water reform have always been tricky and the dividing line between farmers and environmentalists has never been greater in this region at least. In acknowledging the urgent need for action, Julia Gillard now has to steer these reforms through a parliament where she'll be relying for support on the one hand from Melbourne Greens MP Adam Bant and on the other New England independent and farmer Tony Windsor. Tony Windsor was appointed today to chair the parliamentary committee and I spoke with him from Tamworth late today. But first let me give you a flavour of the emotions running through the basin communities with scenes from today's briefing by the authority at the southwestern New South Wales town of Griffith. <laughs> Tony Windsor, you're aware of the anger coming from farmers in the basin, slogans like, this is war, fight for your land, no water, no food. Do you sympathise with those sentiments? Oh, obviously. Uh, people are very concerned about uh, what's happening. Uh, I think there's been a, you know, a period of time where most people have been aware that there were going to be some changes proposed. I think the magnitude of the changes has, has actually frightened people and uh, I think we've got to get to a position where we actually do calm down on this and look at it objectively. I think there's a way through this and uh, uh, it, but it will need to be done valley by valley and even town by town because the impacts of change uh, will be quite different uh, on a whole range of communities. You said this morning that the final, final Murray-Darling Basin plan probably won't see the light of day uh, during this term of Parliament. Now, theoretically, that's three years. Is that a reflection of the kind of priority you place on it or simply that it will continue to get bogged down in the politics? Well, I think the point I was making that the, was that the political process will kick in at some stage uh, in this, particularly... Uh, if uh, the people in the valley uh, don't become more objective about trying to assess what can and can't be done and, uh, and the process doesn't deal more effectively with the socio-economic uh, uh, arrangements within the, the proposal, whatever it happens to end up looking like. But we've also got two state elections uh, in the middle of this too, Kerry, the New South Wales election, the Victorian election. Uh, all of those things can come into play. So even though the authority has put out a guide, it, uh, it's not even a plan yet. It's not even a draft plan. So it's a long way from being a firm legislative proposal. And I think we've got to walk uh, slowly with the people that are affected on this and see if there's a range of options that will fit their particular uh, stressed circumstance. There's some people uh, that may be able to accept a 20% cut with no real economic uh, disadvantage to their communities. In, in other areas, 20% could be enough to annihilate a particular town. So if there's a way and a, a mean to be able to overcome that, I think we've got to get down to that sort of micromanagement and not try and throw a blanket over the whole catchment. The thing I don't understand about your committee, the committee that's been uh, announced today with you as chair, is that you've got this whole uh, process still to run, uh, run by the independent authority and yet there's going to be this parliamentary uh, inquiry chaired by you running parallel to that and you will actually finish your inquiry quite possibly before the even the proposed plan comes out of the authority let alone the final plan at the end of next year so what is the logic well there may be <coughs> room to extend uh, the committee's deliberations uh, as well into that uh, but essentially it's to provide a conduit uh, uh, from the people back to the parliamentary arena and hopefully in, uh, in a sense where there's, no, there's not a political conflict. If this committee process can work, we could actually bring 
uh, people from different p political backgrounds together, engage with the community, look at the socio-economics of all of this, look at the various proposals as to whether there can be you know, evaporative savings or there can be water introduced into the system or which, which valleys will, will water use efficiency work better in or where will buyback be the most effective tool. Uh, to get water back into the system. Uh, I, th I think it's important that the parliament actually uh, engages at, at that level rather than the normal combative uh, politics on this. It, this one is one that would be easy to play politics with. I think it's quite possibly uh, going to be an advantage being in a hung parliament on this issue because I think everybody wants a resolution. People in the, in the system don't want years and years of uncertainty, but they don't want to get wiped out either. And I think there's a whole range of uh, possibilities that could arise from, from having the committee running parallel to the authorities' deliberations. Well, immediately after the election, you, called, uh, you famously called Barnaby Joyce uh, a fool and an embarrassment to country Australia. He's the Coalition's water spokesman. Um, do you accept that he may have a constructive contribution to make to this debate? Uh, I would have thought if you want this to be bipartisan, you'd want to, uh, you'd want to mend the fences with him, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, no, no, we've jumped a few fences together. No, no problem. We, we went to the same university, Kerrick. Well, uh, we, but yes, we but, I, but, 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 but your <laughs> comments after the election, the comments after the election were a bit more recent than that. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's all well and good. Quite, uh, quite seriously, how do you reach out to Barnaby Joyce? How do you cross that bridge? Well, I, I don't have a problem with that. I've spoken to Barnaby Joyce uh, during the negotiation periods uh, into the deliberation of the government. Uh, you know, obviously, he comes from St George. He'd be concerned about what's happening to that uh, community. I think he'd want to embrace uh, a committee such as this to try and uh, develop some sort of logical and objective process that deals with some of the issues that are being raised at these meetings that we that we see at the moment. And, and, uh, on, the, and on the other hand, on the other hand, you've got the Greens who have already expressed the view that the amount of the volume of water that the authority has identified as needing to go back into the Murray uh, is the minimum that they believe the Murray needs to survive. Now, do do you accept that side of the equation that the Murray is in desperate need for that water long term? Well, I think everybody accepts that in certain parts of the, the system uh, that there's been an over-allocation and an overuse uh, of water. But that doesn't apply th through every part of the system, and I think that's one of the things that we've got to look at. But even the authorities' plan, it, it's got this sort of loose gauge of somewhere between three and 4,000 gigalitres being required by the system. Well, even in their own recommendations in this guide, and it's still only a guide, they've given themselves 25% wriggle room. Yeah. If 3,000 will do it, why have they got 4,000 in there? Uh, so, uh, and it, it begs the question about some of the evaporative losses. You know, if 3,000 is the answer, uh, they can gain 10% of that by re-engineering Menindee Lakes. Uh, and there's other uh, water saving and water efficiency means that could be put in place which start to whittle away at that in terms of the losses to the communities but don't affect the benefits to the system. And that's the sort of thing that we, I think we've got to... Uh, look more closely at the authorities are a bit uh, caught in the, you know, what was essentially what well, was the John Howard uh, uh, coalition government's 2007 Water Act. I, I voted against it. I was the only one out of 150 who didn't vote for it because it, it was rushed then. So we're dealing with, in a sense, a flawed piece of legislation, but we're dealing with an issue that needs to be addressed. This is a real issue from both sides, the river and the people, and I think there's, there's a way through this uh, where both sides... They mightn't have a win-win, but they'll have a better-better. And I think the environmentalists need to you know, get out of their land sh shares a bit and give people a bit of room to move on this and uh, they'll, they'll see a solution develop. But uh, if, if they just want the old conflicts, uh, that'll be the worst thing that'll happen for the river and the people who live on it. Tony Windsor, thanks very much for talking with us. Thanks, Kerry.